It is the second Shaban in Medina. But this revelation in which the month of Ramadan is chosen for a month of compulsory fast, this had come down from the Law al-Mahfuz, the preserved tablet in heaven, come down to the Sama al-Dunya, the lowest of the Samawat, and it came down on Laylatul Qadr. So long ago, 14, 15 years ago it came down. When Ikra bismi rabbika allazi came down to the Prophet the whole Quran came down there. So why, why, why does Allah wait for 15 years, almost 15 years, to send down this revelation from the Sama al dunya to Nabi Muhammad promulgating the fast of Ramadan? Why did it take so long? What is Allah waiting for? And waited for almost 15 years. We will not be able to give you the full answer in the amount of time we have left for today. But we will begin the answer. I notice there are no calls uh, today. Um, let us recall that it is in the month of Shaban, which is the month which precedes Ramadan, that the revelation came down. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَسُمْ Whosoever lives to witness the month of Ramadan, you must fast. It is happening in the Shaban, the month of Shaban. But something else happened in that month of Shaban. And that is that we used to perform our Salat facing the Qibla in Jerusalem. That was our Qibla. The Qibla means the direction of prayer. And Jerusalem was the Qibla for the Jews. Jerusalem was the Qibla for the, Hindu, for the Christians. And Jerusalem was our Qibla as well. And so when Nabi Muhammad wasalam, was in Mecca and he had to perform Salat, he would stand at a corner of the Kaaba where he could face both the Kaaba and Jerusalem at the same time. That is where he performed his Salat. Because he has a legal obligation to pray in the direction of Jerusalem. But his heart is with the Kaaba. But when we left Mecca and we went to Medina, now that is no longer possible. You have to pray in the direction of Jerusalem and your back is now turned to the Kaaba. <laughs> your back is turned to the Kaaba. It was a great test. It was a great test. And that is how we prayed for 17 months until Revelation came down in the month of Shaban, the second Shaban in Medina, the same month in which the revelation came down about the fast of Ramadan. And Allah says, turn to the Kaaba. This is Naskh. This is abrogation. This is cancellation. The old Qibla is now canceled for us not for them. It is still the Qibla for the Jew. It is still the Qibla for the Christian. I made a mistake many years ago when I said it's no cancel for them as well. No, I didn't study the Quran properly. I make mistakes. But Alhamdulillah, when I make a mistake and I recognize it's a mistake, I'm not afraid to correct myself. Alhamdulillah. And my students also must do the same. So Allah changed the Qibla. This is Nasr. Canceled or abrogated the old Qibla for us, not for them. 
and gave us a new Qibla, which is the Kaaba. And that happened in the month of Shaban, the second Shaban. But something else happened. The next month after Shaban will be Ramadan. And so far, we have been prohibited from fighting. No, not allowed. All of the 13 months, 13, sorry, 13 years that we were in Mecca, after the revelation came down for the first time, 13 years in Mecca, we were not allowed to fight. No fighting. And 17 months in Medina, no fighting, none. But next month will be Ramadan, and it was on the 17th day of Ramadan that we fought the Battle of Badr. If I'm wrong, please correct me, because I'm 75 years of age, and sometimes I don't remember, OK? I believe it was the 17th day of Ramadan that the Battle of Badr was fought. And we are fighting now, which we are not allowed to do before. The permission to fight is now given. We are not sure whether it was also in the month of Shaban, but it has to be just before Ramadan. So three things are happening at the same time. Number one, the Qibla is changed. Number two, the law of fasting is changed. Number three, the law of prohibit prohibition of warfare fighting is changed. Kutiba alaykumul kital. Fighting is now made obligatory upon you. Kutiba alaykumul siyam. Fasting is now made obligatory on you. Why? Why? Why at this time? I'm going to have to keep you in a little bit of suspense until next, next week, inshallah, when we will attempt to answer the question, why has Allah done these things at this time? 